Thanks. So it's 12 o'clock sharp as we speak. So welcome back, everybody. I have the honor of sharing this session about two talks centering about aging, which is a very fascinating topic. And our first speaker is going to be Sonia Kvachkova. I hope I pronounced it okay. From the Laboratory of Molecular Therapy Institute of Biotechnology and also the Czech Academy of Science. So without taking more of your time away, uh, the floor is yours. And uh, please start your presentation. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So give me a second to... Yeah, I hope it works. Oh, come on. Yeah, perfect. So uh, good afternoon or good morning, depends where you are. So before I start with my presentation, I would like to thank the organizers for organizing this amazing conference and also to give me the opportunity to present here today. Uh, I will talk about the cellular senescence, uh, its importance, but also the danger for the organism, and also about the, the possible, the new possibilities in targeting the cellular senescence uh, in and elimination of senescent cells uh, in from the organ. Uh, so. Uh, cellular senescence was uh, developed or described almost 70 years ago by Leonard Heiflick and uh, is defined as a cell cycle arrest that uh, limits the proliferative potential of damaged cells. Cellular senescence can be induced naturally by telomere shortening uh, as a part of uh, the natural lifespan limit of the cell, but also prematurely. Uh, by DNA damage induction using different chemicals, agents, including uh, the agents which are commonly used uh, in the chemotherapy. Uh, they can be induced uh, physically, for example, after the irradiation or uh, the UV radiation or changes in the pH, after activation of several oncogenes, uh, after mitochondrial damage, as I will talk about this later. And uh, it was also found something which is called uh, the free radical uh, theory of aging, where the researchers describe uh, that the increased uh, secretion and increased production of free radicals are also able to induce cellular senescence. Uh, induction of senescence uh, in the highly proliferative cells, uh, especially in the tumor cells, uh, result in uh, the growth arrest and reduction of tumorigenesis, which is, of course, beneficial for the organism. Uh, also, the recruitment of immune cells by these senescent cells into the site of the tumor and subsequent elimination of tumor cells by these immune cells is uh, beneficial. Uh, but uh, when these senescent cells are not uh, eliminated, uh, let's say, immediately or soon after the induction, they can produce uh, the chronic inflammation, uh, they can uh, damage the tissue and induce the age-related diseases. Before, I will describe this dual role of senescent cells in the organism much more in detail. I would like to uh, briefly introduce you the phenotype of senescent cells. In a tissue culture, we can recognize uh, easily the senescent cells because uh, they are really huge. They have enlarged nucleus in comparison with uh, the normal cells because uh, on the tissue dish, they have enough space to be enlarged. Uh, but when we want to detect these senescent cells uh, in vivo in organism, we rather use the uh, detection of uh, changes in gene expression. Especially, we can find uh, increased uh, P16, RB, of, or P53, uh, P21 uh, pathways. In several types of senescent cells, we can detect this heterochromatinization. Almost in all types of senescent cells, uh, there is accumulation of uh, uh, chronic uh, DNA damage and irreparable DNA damage, foci, which can be nicely recognized by the gamma H2AX and uh, 53 BP1 markers. And there is also accumulation of promyelocytic leukemia protein bodies, which are uh, really important in activation of DNA damage response because 
uh, many of uh, the proteins which are involved in uh, the DNA damage response are accumulated and activated here, like P53 or RB. I must mention here that even we have the huge knowledge about the senescent cells, till now there is no specific senescent markers. And we, when we want to detect the senescent uh, or senescent cells in organism, we rather use the combination of these markers. Uh, the most important marker of senescence is uh, something which is called senescent associated secretory phenotype. This is a cocktail of uh, proteins and molecules, which uh, we can divide into the two groups. One is the components of uh, extracellular matrix, like metalloproteases, fibronectin, or collagen. And the second group is, uh, or the, in the second group, there are the signaling molecules, like growth factors, chemokines, and cytokines, especially uh, the pro inflammatory cytokines. People often ask, uh, what's the difference between senescence, quiescence, and the terminally differentiated cells? Uh, there are many differences, but uh, the two most important uh, are uh, the presence of uh, this uh, senescent uh, secretory phenotype, which is specific just for uh, these senescent cells, and also the cell cycle arrest, which can be partially reversible for uh, the senescent cells. I will talk later about this. In comparison, for example, with the quiescent cells, where the cell cycle arrest is fully re reversible. So, to explain you the dual role of uh, senescence in organism, we can recognize something which is called uh, acute senescence, and this acute senescence uh, seems to have a beneficial role uh, in organism. Here we can find uh, the senescence as an anti-cancer defense, as I mentioned on the beginning of my presentation, but also the wound healing, where uh, the senescent cells um, are the part of a regenerative response after the injury. Uh, the senescent endothelial cells or the fibroblasts can promote uh, the wound healing by secreting growth factors, which induces uh, the myofibroblast differentiation. Next, uh, the cellular senescence was found uh, during the embryo development in many tissues and uh, the many organs. Uh, mechanistically, it was found uh, on the model of two most uh, studied uh, tissue and organs that there is a, a critical role of TGM beta wind pathway in induction of uh, P21 and induction of senescence. Yeah. And uh, the down regulation of uh, this P21 or the knockout of this P21. Uh, leads to incorrect kidney development and aberrant, aberrant unfolding of this uh, endolymphatic sac, which leads to the morphological defects uh, in development of embryo. In adult, uh, we can uh, find, uh, find the senescence uh, as uh, a part of natural maturation program of megakaryocytes and also the placental uh, syncytial trophoblast. And it was also found uh, in this specific type of nature killer cells, uh, which are abundant in the maternal fetal interface. And uh, yeah, these cells are important for the successful pregnancy. So this was the beneficial effect of senescence. But uh, unfortunately, uh, for the most type of uh, the persistent senescent cells in the organism, which we call the chronic senescence, uh, this persistence is uh, detrimental for the organism and for the tissues. Normally, after the damage of the tissue and accumulation or induction of senescence, these senescent cells produce uh, the secretory phenotype, which recruits the immune cells into the site of damaged tissue. And these immune cells eliminate these senescent cells, and then the tissue regenerates these empty places with the new cells. Uh, after the specific events, for example, when uh, the organism is not able to recruit the immune system, this uh, we can find, for example, uh, we can find, for example, in the immunodeficient patients or in uh, the old people, or uh, if these immune cells are not able to eliminate uh, the senescent cells, 
for example, uh, because the senescent cells uh, secrete uh, the increased amount of metal proteases, which can cleave the specific uh, senescent receptors on the surface, and uh, these senescent cells became invisible for these uh, for these immune cells, or uh, the tissue is not able to regenerate these anti places, and uh, these places are replaced by uh, the fibrotic tissue. So all of these events uh, can uh, result in accumulation of senescent cells, increased uh, uh, production of uh, chronic inflammation, tissue damage, and induction of age-related diseases, like, like many kinds of fibrosis, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, metabolic disorders, for example, osteoporosis, or induction of cancer, or uh, it could also spread the existing cancer. Uh, the senescence can affect not only uh, the cells in the solid tissues, but also uh, the immune cells. Uh, this immunosenescence then contributes to the inflammatory response and the, to the chronic inflammation. Uh, these immunosenescent cells uh, are not able to properly communicate uh, with uh, the other cells by cell-to-cell -cell contact, which limits the tissue regeneration and also contributes to the tissue dysfunction and disability. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, senescent cells produce a huge amount of, uh, let's say, pro-inflammatory cytokines and commonly this, this senescent phenotype, which can not only induce the chronic inflammation and uh, maintain the senescent phenotype by autocrine or paracrine pathways, but uh, especially the production of interleukin-1, interleukin-6, 8, TGF beta, and production of free radicals uh, can induce the DNA damage and the cellular senescence also in neighboring cells. And when these cytokines are secreted into the blood, it can uh, induce the senescence for a long distance uh, in different organs. This is why the cellular senescence is so dangerous because from the small amount of senescent cells uh, in one tissue, this can spread into the whole organism and can, can induce the age-related diseases. Um, another danger of senescent cells is because of uh, the reversibility of uh, the, cells, uh, the cell cycle or the reversibility of senescent phenotype. Since originally the cellular senescence was described as an irreversible cell cycle RS, now we know that um, under the specific conditions, these senescent cells can re-enter the cell cycle. For example, after the inactivation of RB protein or after the inhibition of P16 or P10 protein uh, on the background of inactivated or depleted P53. This was nicely shown on the model of melanoma where they found that uh, these cells, these melanoma cells, uh, which re-enter the cell cycle from their senescent state, were much more aggressive uh, than the normal melanoma cells. And it was due to uh, the TGF beta wind pathway, which uh, gives uh, these cells potential uh, of the cancer stem cell-like cells. So, in the recent papers, uh, many researchers, uh, many, re many researchers uh, keep their eyes uh, on the mitochondria as a key player in uh, the maintenance and uh, the activation of senescence, because uh, the mitochondria is uh, the main organelle or important organelle for uh, the ATP production and then energy production and it also regulates the metabolism, yeah, not only the cancer, but also the senescent cells. So we know that uh, despite the cell cycle arrest, senescent cells remain metabolic, highly metabolically active. They increase uh, the oxygen consumption, they produce a lot of energy, they increase the lipid catabolism, and also increase uh, the production of free radicals which all together uh, result in the robust metabolic shift in uh, the mitochondria and in uh, the senescent cells. We also know that uh, uh, damage of mitochondria in normal cells can induce uh, the cellular senescence via activation of the DNA damage response. 
uh, there are several pathways or several ways uh, how the damaged mitochondria can induce uh, this uh, cell cycle arrest, uh, DNA damage activation, and the cell loss and essence. For example, uh, as I mentioned, the increased loss production after the damage uh, or inhibition of uh, the respiration uh, chain. Uh, it was described also the increased AMPK activity after the changes in the ratio of uh, AMP ATP level in the cytoplasm or changes uh, in the Krebs cycle. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Changes in the Krebs cycle you can induce uh, this premature senescence and, for example, the toxic accumulation of uh, calcium or copper can induce the cellular senescence. So, uh, since we know that uh, the altered mitochondria uh, can be the cause and also the consequence of cellular senescence, uh, the elimination of senescent cells by targeting mitochondria uh, can represent a new strategy for the treatment of senescent-related pathologies and also the age-related diseases. As was mentioned yesterday by Anya and Mary, uh, searching for uh, some specific gene or protein in targeting of cancer is like searching for the magic bullet because of the heterogeneity of uh, cancer cells. Uh, in our lab, uh, we try to target not only specific protein, we, we try to target the whole organelle, the mitochondria, yeah, as the major source of energy and the regulator of metabolism of cancer cells. Uh, we developed uh, the chemical which is called mitotam. It's a tamoxifen which is specifically targeted into the mitochondria of cancer cells using this triphenyl phosphonium anchor. Uh, and uh, the, the role of mitotam or the effect of mitotam is the, the inhibition of complex one as well as inhibition of activity of ATPase which together result in uh, decrease of respiration, increase of growth production, and together with decreased mitochondrial potential. Also, uh, decrease the mitochondrial integrity and result in the altered metabolism of cancer cells, and it results in death of this cancer cell. Uh, the specific targeting of mitotam into the mitochondria of cancer cells is due to the increased mitochondrial potential of these cancer cells. So now we successfully finished the clinical trial 1 and 1b on the solid tumors and we plan to start the, the trial 1b also for the acute myelite leukemia. So why I'm talking about our anti-cancer research here? It was found that elimination of senescent cells uh, using uh, some genetic model result in the prolonged lifespan of mice and also in uh, decrease of age-related diseases, as is nicely shown on this picture. Since we know that senescent cells increase mitochondrial potential, similarly like the cancer cells, we ask if uh, our mitotan can also eliminate not only the cancer cells, but also the senescent cells from the organism. So to prove this hypothesis, uh, we tested uh, the mitotem in vitro on a model of primary retinal pigmental epithelial cells, but also the foreskin fibroblasts and uh, the lung fibroblasts, which is not shown here. And yeah, we really observe the specific elimination of the cancer cells in comparison with the primary cells and with the comparison with the tam tamoxifen alone. So this is a specific effect of our new drug mitotem. Uh, to test it in vivo, we used uh, this uh, natural model of aging. We used the uh, natural aged mice treated with the mitotem. And again, even we observed increased senescent markers in different tissues in these aged mice. After the mitotem, we were able to decrease these markers on the level of young control mice. So it seems that uh, the mitotem is not only the anti-cancer agent, but it can also eliminate the senescent cells from the organism. Uh, in the context of uh, other senolytics, yeah, because mitotem is not, not the only one, uh, there are several of them with uh, the senolytic or senomorphic activity. 
you can see they target the specific proteins or the specific pathways, yeah, especially the BCL2 or the other members of uh, BCL family. The advantage of mitotem is that we target uh, the whole organelle. We target uh, the organelle which is important for uh, the energy production and for the regulation of metabolism. So, which I think it could be benefit in comparison with uh, the other senolytic agents which target just a specific molecule. It's something, uh, as was mentioned yesterday, in the case of cancer. So, as I mentioned, that um, uh, accumulation of senescent cells are able to induce, uh, induce uh, the age-related diseases in the organism. From all of these uh, diseases, uh, there is a list of five, which is called the deadly quintet. Uh, this is called deadly quintet because uh, this is the five most uh, deadly diseases uh, which, which are connected with uh, the aging and accumulation of senescent cells. To see if our drug uh, not only eliminates the senescent cells, but is also able to decrease uh, the age-related diseases. We choose the diabetes um, as uh, the one of the most widespread disease in the Czech Republic. Uh, the current pharmacological approaches using um, to cure the diabetes uh, target uh, only the physiological defects. Uh, they, for example, target uh, the enhancing insulin secretion or they target um, yeah, the, the decreased ability to absorb the glucose from the blood. Despite the, the extensive efforts, uh, the, the current therapies have uh, limited efficacy, which uh, make a place for uh, searching for a novel therapeutic opportunities. And we really think that elimination of senescent cells will be the one of the way uh, how to improve the, the diagnosis of these patients. So uh, to check if uh, the mitotem or the targeting of mitochondria is able to decrease, uh, decrease the age-related diseases for, and diabetes. Uh, we use the model of uh, high-fat diet fat mice to induce the, the diabetes and the obesity in, this, in these animals. And we really observed that after the treatment with mitotem, we were able to decrease uh, the fasting glucose as well as we were able to increase the absorption of glucose from the blood on the level uh, of uh, the control animals. Moreover, we also observed uh, decreased production of uh, the hormones uh, connected with uh, the diabetes like insulin or leptin. Since these hormones are, uh, or secretion of these hormones are mainly connected with uh, the adipose tissue, here you can nicely see that uh, after the mitotem treatment, we are able to decrease the cellular senescence in this tissue, which, is, yeah, which can be tightly connected with this decreased secretion of these uh, diabetic hormones. But surprising, surprisingly, we also observed uh, the decreased body weight of these animals, as well as uh, decreased, uh, um, decreased adipose tissue mass which is connected with uh, the decreased uh, accumulation of lipids in the adipocytes. Uh, mechanistically, why yeah, this happened after the mitotem, we found uh, that mitotem regulates uh, the adipogenesis. Uh, it blocks uh, the maturation of preadipocytes into the fully developed uh, adipocytes, which uh, not only prevents uh, the accumulation of lipids, but uh, we found it uh, prevents also the novel induction of cellular senescence in this tissue. Uh, similarly, uh, we observed a decrease of senescence also in the liver tissue, which is again tightly connected with accumulation of lipids in the hepatocytes, where this accumulation uh, leads to induction of liver steatosis in the liver and accumulation of uh, the lipids uh, in the kidney is also tightly connected with uh, the diabetic comorbidity nephropathy. So here you can nicely see that uh, decrease of the senescence, decrease this accumulation, which can prevent this diabetes, diabetic comorbidities. 
what is important, uh, we found that uh, well, we found the persistence of this effect also after the end of the treatment. Yeah, we found uh, decreased body weight as well as uh, decreased diabetic parameters and uh, decreased diabetic comorbidities also when we remove the mitotem. So uh, all of this together, uh, or to conclude this, uh, mitotem can represent uh, the promising, the new promising strategy for the treatment of age-related diseases. Finally, just to briefly mention, uh, mention here, because yeah, uh, nowadays uh, the hot topic is uh, the coronavirus and the COVID infections. And we know or it's known that uh, the diabetes and uh, the obesity are the major risk factors for, uh, uh, for the production or uh, for the accumulation of the viral particle and for the bad prognosis of the patients infected with uh, the COVID-19. It's because uh, the decreased glucose level in the blood and the decreased hypoxia, mainly in uh, the adipose tissue, can uh, help to replicate the viral particle and also the accumulation of immune cells, especially in the fat tissue or in the adipose tissue, uh, block the function of these immune cells, which again uh, decrease the ability of the organism to fight against this viral infection. Uh, since we, show, uh, we showed that uh, the mitotem decrease uh, the glucose level in the blood and also decrease uh, the amount or the mass of adipose tissue, we believe uh, that uh, the elimination of senescent cells, maybe using the mitotem, uh, can contribute to improved prognosis of the diabetic patients infected with the COVID-19. So I would like to thank uh, all my colleagues, especially to Jiří Neužil, who is the head of our laboratory, uh, and Aniška Davidová, Martin Haluzík, Jarmila Trnovská, and Petr Soboda, who uh, work on this uh, diabetic project, and you for attention. Thank you very much also for leaving enough time to have a very interesting discussion as I'm sure that this talk will trigger. Martin, you are raising your hand uh, physically, I suppose. Uh, yes. Everyone else, they can uh, click on the participant button and raise their hand there. Uh, but Martin, uh, go ahead, please. Thanks. Uh, I, again, just to mention, I can't really use the function because I'm the host of this and Zoom doesn't allow me to. <laughs> So I have to do it the old fashioned way. Um, so I have two questions. Um, so first, maybe I missed uh, something or misheard something, but uh, do, so did you mean to suggest that the uh, SASP is actually, uh, you know, for sort of a defining characteristic or, or the key biomarker that all uh, that senescent cells exhibit? Uh, and I'm asking this because from what I gather from the literature, uh, not all senescent cells uh, exhibit uh, SASP. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this was shown that uh, the majority of senescent cells produce this SASP, but, but as I mentioned uh, in the slide uh, before, uh, there is no specific marker uh, of senescent, so rather is a combination of the known markers, yeah, including the SASP. But we know that uh, this uh, senescent, um, this, uh, this secretory phenotype is, uh, is common for the senescent cells and uh, it's uh, yeah one of the specific one of the most specific marker yes so just to follow up uh, basically the there is the well-known uh, problem uh, with uh, exactly identifying the the key biomarkers to to, to precisely identify the senescent cells uh, so I wonder uh, whether there are uh, probably well perhaps some uh, differences between uh, the sort of newly formed senescent cells uh, as opposed to the enduring senescent cells that would uh, allow targeting uh, the senescent cells in a discriminatory way, so to speak, so, so as to keep the beneficial as, uh, effects like, you know, uh, in tissue repair uh, or in resolving fibrosis, for instance, 
so on the one hand, while getting rid of the negative effects, so that would concern the sort of enduring senescent cells causing uh, 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 um, uh, chronic uh, inflammation, for instance. So. Yeah, uh, the targeting of senescent cells. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the the beneficial let's say the, the, the beneficial senescent. Uh, they are uh, this senescence is beneficial because it's acute. Uh, if these acute cells are not eliminating from uh, the tissue or from the organism, uh, they became uh, the chronic and persistent and chronic, and that's why uh, they became the dangerous. And this is this is also uh, the slight discrepancy be between. Uh, the acute senescence in uh, the activation of uh, fibrosis in the tissue during the wound healing and uh, the chronic senescence which, which can induce the, the chronic fibrosis. So uh, yeah, the, the, the senescent cells are benefit just uh, during the limit, limited period yeah, and they must be eliminated. So uh, when we are trying to eliminate the senescent cells as uh, a tool for treating the age-related diseases. Uh, we also will affect uh, these uh, acute senescent cells, but uh, it doesn't matter because once they, uh, once they are induced, yeah, they, um, let's say, prevent, uh, for example, yeah, the tumor genesis or they prevent uh, some expansion of the injury, but they must be, re uh, they must be removed. And it doesn't matter if uh, with our drug or um, uh, after the immune system recruitment. Thank you, this is wonderful, thanks. Thanks, uh, next uh, question or remark in line is by Mary Albrecht Jorder. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, hi, Sonia, uh, very nice talk, uh, very nice work. I have a question regarding the, the effect of metatum on the adipocyte tissue. Does it work by removing senescent cells as metotam is supposed to do, or did I understand you right that it also prevents the differentiation of pre-adipocytes to adipocytes? If you could please clarify that. Yeah, thank you for this question, and I apologize. I didn't explain much, much more in detail because it was during the time, but uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, our hypothesis now is uh, that uh, both of these situations uh, are in the, in the adipose tissue. It means we know uh, that mitotem prevents so the novel accumulation of senescent cells, but we also know that mitotem is uh, able to remove uh, the senescent cells which are uh, actually in the tissue. So it plays a role in, on the both sides. So if I answer it correctly for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. A next comment by, or question by Jonathan Shaw, please. Hi, thank you very much for the talk. Um, so I had a kind of a very minor technical question in a sense about this mitotem study. Uh, you, you said that you fed the diet, uh, you fed the mice a high fat diet. Uh, what exactly does this diet consist in? Yeah, uh, I'm not 100% uh, sure if I answered correctly now because I don't have uh, the numbers here, but it was 60% uh, of uh, fat, 20% uh, or percent of some uh, fat milk and uh, yeah, the other nutrition. So it was, it was a standard diet for, uh, used for the induction of uh, the diabetes or, or let's say the, the obesity and subsequent diabetes. Okay, I mean, partly I ask because usually from what I've seen in a lot of these kinds of studies, in a sense, there's a kind of so-called high fat diet in a way that usually consists of things like uh, soybean oil and lard and refined sugars um, that is really somewhat more of a high fat, fairly moderate uh, sugar diet. Um, and I, I guess part of the concern is that it can be somewhat misleading because we also do know um, that high fat diets in terms of ketogenic diets have a lot of beneficial physiological effects. Um, and I just wonder, I guess, what kind of Issues might get obscured there, I suppose, by focusing so, on. So yeah, we, we can we can meet uh, in the chat room, and uh, I will find uh, yeah, uh, the yeah the what, what's the what's the high fed our high fed diet was. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Is there any other raised hand at the moment, which doesn't seem to be the case? 
maybe until we get to the next question, I kind of may follow up to Jonathan's uh, question right now. I was thinking when targeting uh, the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, if, if it were possible that some of the effects were uh, more in due, due or comparable to the effects you get with caloric restriction or as well, or if you have any thoughts comparing uh, this targeting approach to the, the intermittent fasting and, and autophagy mechanisms. Oh, yeah, uh, the autophagy. Oh, sorry, I have some problem now with the Zoom. Okay, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, important is you can see me and you can hear me. So, uh, yeah, the autophagy mechanism. Uh, we can now uh, study it uh, properly because it's one of our candidates, yeah, how it works. So it's under the study. Yeah, I'm not, not able to, to answer it uh, properly now. So we will see. Yeah. More evidence needed. <laughs> Are there any other questions at this point? I don't see any raised hands. Well, in that case, um, let's uh, all thank our speaker again.